So we're going to hear from uh, we're going to hear from Carter first, and then I also want to mention we have Department of Agriculture here in the back. I know they're probably back there hiding, but I did ask if they could be here. So I'm going to ask them to come up in the front uh, because at the end I'd like them to give a brief, very brief update on the. Um, the Wolf Compensation Program, which is a, obviously a part of what you discussed, but it's administered by a different agency, the Department of Agriculture. So, Carter, welcome to Oregon, and thank you very much for uh, making the trip here today. Uh, thank you, Chairman and uh, fellow senators, to uh, let me come over and speak briefly. <clears throat> I probably can, making. Can myself you just state your name again? Oh, for the I'm record? sorry. Yes. Don't do this very often. Uh, my name is uh, Carter Niemeyer. And uh, I'm a former U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service person. Right now I'm a retired contractor, I guess would be my title. And uh, I have spent 33 years with the federal government, uh, 26 years uh, with the U.S. Department of Agriculture Wildlife Services. Um, finished out my career in Boise, Idaho as the Wolf Recovery Coordinator for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service there. Uh, while working for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, I was for 10 years, from about 1990 to 2000, um, a wolf depredation uh, investigator. They call it a um, uh, wolf management specialist, first of its kind at the time when uh, wolves were reintroduced. So uh, I have spent the lion's share of my career working in the field as uh, a livestock investigator looking at uh, predator damage. Um, Again, I didn't come here with a, with a lot to say other than uh, I will say that wolves, I have learned, are very prolific animals. Uh, they're very resilient animals. Uh, if you don't shoot them, uh, they can live just about anywhere and thrive. And uh, probably the greatest success of wolves is their ability to disperse. Uh, people ask, why are they so successful? And it's because they can travel these uh, tremendous distances. Um, Oregon and Washington being the latest recipients of this uh, behavior to disperse over uh, large portions of the landscape. Um, I just want to say it, uh, I think Oregon has a, a great wolf plan. It's very important to have some kind of a road map to uh, manage wolves as the numbers grow. Uh, I've worked a little bit with the state uh, off and on and uh, I commend Russ. I didn't come here to give him attaboys, but um, he's uh, done a great job, I think, in, in a very uh, tough position. I was in that position once myself. Um, there's no doubt that uh, wolf numbers will continue to increase uh, and they will thrive and uh, they will be a challenging polarizing issue, no doubt, uh, wherever they've appeared on the landscape. Um, and I'm not going to say a whole lot more other than I'd be happy to answer any questions when you get to that point. Great. Thank you. And I wanted to see if Department of Ag is back there. So we're going to have just a very brief update and then we'll open up for questions because I'm sure there'll be questions. Thank you, Lauren. You just hand him the microphone. That's okay. You can, you can stay there. <coughs> Learn if you can provide just a very quick background on our uh, wolf compensation programs, the two in the state, and maybe talk about how they're how they're being utilized and yeah. uh, any updates that you have. Yeah, good afternoon. For the record, Lauren Henderson. I'm the assistant director with the Oregon Department of Agriculture. And just as a reminder, uh, last legislative session, the department was directed to establish um, the compensation program. Um, it had a hundred thousand dollars in it. Um, and really, here to say today, I, I think the first year, given that it is a new program, went off uh, pretty well. Uh, that is um, no luck. The counties worked very hard to get that program off the, off the ground. We did have, for the 2012 grant period, which was August of 2011 to February, about $155,000 in requests. So there is no shortage of a need um, there. We did award um, out of that 82,000 of the 100 we had for the first year. Uh, that has presented some challenges because now we're in the second year. Um, don't have the new 100 that is currently in the governor's proposed budget for 1315. So we had to be a little more judicious in this new cycle. And we're working through that, have not made awards uh, yet. Um, all of 
Wallowa County had the losses in 2012. They're the only county that did have those losses for that grant period. And the death and injury compensation in that county was fully paid for by the, the fund. It was, um, I believe, looking at my chart here, $13,000 was given to Wallowa County for those losses. No other county had any losses at that time. In addition, and I'm throwing out a lot of numbers here, and I will tell you that the department was also directed in the l legislation to provide a report back to this legislature. We're working on that, and there's, there will be a good report, I think, that comes to you. But out of the first round of 82,000 awarded, 80% 80 of the dollars were allocated for prevention. I know there was much discussion about that when that went through, and so 66,000 went to preventative measures, just like you saw on the slide uh, previously. 13,000 went for death and injury, and then only about 3,000 went to ac the actual county's implementation of the program, which was a, a fairly small number given the task that they had to, to do at that time. We are in the process right now of looking through the new requests for 2013. Again, we had 88,000 in requests and only about 20 or 25,000 to allocate this time. Uh, we believe we're gonna be able to cover the death and injury losses again, uh, but we'll have a smaller number for the preventative uh, measures going forward. We did have eight counties apply the first time. We've now increased and added two counties, so we will have 10 that asked for dollars uh, in this next cycle, and so I'll just stop there and answer any questions. And Lauren, you might just have. a quick follow-up: Do you also implement the tax credit, or is that completely through the Department of Revenue? No, that uh, uh, Chair Dingfelder, that is through the Department of Revenue. Um, our our role is to make sure, working with ODF and W and Revenue, that people aren't using both programs; they have to do one or the other. Okay, great. Thank you.